a polar bear. Polar bears are considered top predators, which means they'll actually eat other animals. So they'll feed on things like ring seals or bearded seals and even larger species like walrus or whales if they get the opportunity. Things like these will help them build up their energy and keep them fat. Hi, I am Yuli. I'm from Budapest, Hungary. I study in Britannica International School and I love polar bears and I'm wondering how many polar bears live in the whole wild world. Unfortunately, if we ask them to all line up nicely, they don't cooperate very well, so we can't just count them. We have to use some techniques or methods to make a really good, educated guess on how many polar bears there are. Right now, scientists think there are about 25,000 polar bears in the world. Hi, I'm Lana from Minnesota. How many seals does a polar bear need to eat? Seals come in all sorts of different sizes, from pups that are pretty small, all the way to bearded seals that can be many times my body size. The other trick to this is that if you're a small polar bear, you don't need as many seals as you are if you're a big polar bear, which needs lots more seals to get lots of body fat. What we normally think about is that polar bears need about one seal a week during the peak period of feeding, which is about three months during the springtime. If a bear gets uh, one seal a week, it's doing pretty good, and it'll be able to go a long time with the stored body fat that it gets from eating those seals. If you go out on the sea ice, what you will find is this long black slick of poop. It's going to be very runny because the bear has been gorging itself on seals and mainly seal fat. It looks like, um, like tar or like oil. However, if you go looking for polar bear poop on land, it's going to look quite different. If they're forced to be there over the summer when the sea ice is gone, they will eat grass and berries and kelp. So the poop is going to be more like a dog poop, so it'll be in a pile and the color is going to be light brown. Hi, I'm Taylor from Team Polar Power in Pittsburgh, PA. My question is, why are polar bears white with a black nose? Hi, my name is Camden. I'm four. And why are polar bears white? Polar bears are white because they live in a place that's very cold, so it has a lot of ice and snow. Because polar bears are white also, that makes them very hard to see. And because they're hard to see, they can sneak up on seals and catch them. Seals are their favorite food, so this is really important. And polar bears have a black nose because it helps keep that nose from getting a sunburn. There's not very much fur on the nose, so it could get a sunburn where there's a lot of sun, even if it's cold out. Hello, I'm Clara. Uh, I live in Montana, and um, I'm wondering, how far polar bears can swim. So polar bears are home in the water. They're not an aquatic animal like a seal, but they do spend a lot of time in the water. That's why here at the San Diego Zoo, they have a big tank that they can play in. The longest swim that we've seen is 687 kilometers over about nine days for an adult female. That's a really long distance for a polar bear to swim. Hi, I'm Lulu from Team Polar Power in Pittsburgh, PA. My question is, what time of the year do polar bears migrate, if they do, or when they do it? In some places, really far north, the sea ice never totally melts, so they can actually spend all year out on the sea ice. But in most places, the sea ice melts in the summer, and the bears have to go back onto land. But as soon as the sea starts to freeze up again, all the bears are going to go back onto the sea ice. This pattern of going from land to sea, back, is what we call migration. And when they do it depends on when the ice freezes up and when it starts to break apart. In northern Canada, they leave the land for the sea ice in the middle of October. In western Hudson Bay, they leave in the middle of November. And in the southernmost population in James Bay, they leave in the start of December. Hi, I'm Anders from Montana, and I was wondering what is the longest recorded journey of a polar bear? The longest journey we ever recorded was adult females who went all the way from Alaska to Greenland in one year. That's over 5,000 kilometers in a single year. That'd be like me walking from San Diego to New Orleans and back again in the same year. A really long distance. 
Another way we measure this is home range. That's the amount of space a polar bear uses in a single year. The biggest home range you've ever seen is over 600,000 square kilometers. That's bigger than the state of California. Hi, I'm Madison from Team Polar Power in Pittsburgh, PA. My question is about approximately how many polar bears are left in Churchill. Well, the polar bears don't really live in Churchill, as I'm sure you know, because that would be bad for both the polar bears and the people who live in the town. But there are lots of polar bears living in the area. Scientists call this area the Western Hudson Bay area, and all of the bears that live in that area are called a population, which is just another word for a group of polar bears. And there are about a thousand polar bears in the Western Hudson Bay group living around the town of Churchill. I'm Finn and I'm from Montana. I'm wondering, I was in Churchill and I'm wondering why a polar bear just sat in a lake. During the summer and fall in Churchill, temperatures can actually get pretty warm. And since polar bears have a lot of blubber and a thick fur coat, they can actually get pretty heated themselves. So a polar bear may sit in the lake just to cool themselves down. Do you think that one find it in lead or do they stay in hot? There's no per paternal care in polar bears. That means that the males don't provide the females or the cubs with any kind of food. Uh, so that means that the male is probably never going to see those cubs or that female again. It's actually very rare for polar bears to mate with the same individual in two different years. And many polar bears, they'll have at least seven or eight mates over the course of their life. When is the breeding season? Well, to tell you the truth, there is no definitive answer to this. We do know that polar bears breed during the springtime. It typically begins in March and could go all the way uh, into June, so that early summertime. Do cubs recognize their mother for life? We simply don't know. Uh, however, there are several projects going on at the moment where we're trying to study this. What we do know right now is that if you have a family group, so a mom with cubs out on the sea ice, and you then have another family group, and they meet up, when they do separate again, the right cubs will go with the right mom. So obviously they do recognize her as long as they're together. However, years after they've separated, we don't actually know if they can still recognize each other. Hi, my name is Jenny Avery McEntry. I'm, I'm seven years old and I go to the school at Richard Secord. How old can polar bears live up to? Polar bears normally live in the wild to be about 15 or 18 years old. Females will generally live a little longer than males. Males fight each other for food and to reproduce with females. They often get injuries and they just can't live as long as the females do. Here in a zoo or in captivity, like the polar bear over here, they can live to be about 30 years old. They're not looking for food that they, the way that they do in the wild, so it's a little bit easier for them to live longer here in zoos. Hi, I'm Erin from Team Polar Power in Pittsburgh, PA. My question is, why do polar bears live in the cold? Polar bears can live in the cold because they have really warm fur. They have two different kinds of fur. They have a very thick layer of warm fur right on the surface of their skin, and then they have a longer layer of fur over the top of that. You can think of it like they're wearing a very warm sweater, and then they have a jacket on top of that warm sweater. Um, hi, I am Eva from Montana. Um, I was wondering what's, how far polar bears are gonna have to travel in the future for food. Uh, it depends on where the bear lives because bears in different parts of their distribution have different feeding patterns and some bears already travel long ways to feed and other bears are very local and find their food very close nearby. What we expect though is that as the sea ice changes over time we do believe that the ice will become a more challenging place for polar bears to live and it will be more difficult for them to reach the places where they want to be to feed. We expect it to be a greater distance for most bears and one of our big concerns is that some bears may not be able to find enough food in their environment in the future and therefore we could see bears disappear from some parts of where they're currently found. Why did you guys want to study polar bears? 
they are such a unique species that can only exist in one specific part of the world. Since they are animals at the top of the food chain, they're greatly affected by everything that happens to animals down the line. Studying them gives us a lot of insight onto the impact that we as humans are having on the planet. There's still lots to be learned about polar bears and the fact that there's a sense of mystery. Polar bears are continually blowing my mind with their amazing adaptations to their environment. So they're a fun animal to study because they surprise me every time I go and learn something new.